Hello Excel friends. So in this exercise, we're going to take a look at the growth rate for the Inditex Corporation. That's the parent company for Zara. And we're going to take a look at both its revenue growth and its net income or profit growth from 2018 to 2017. And we ask that you set this up in a new worksheet at the end of the current list of worksheets that you name the worksheet Inditext and you set it up like the worksheet below. So if we head back to our workbook, we can see that I'm currently clicked in a worksheet that's named Drexel Currency. Now I want to create a new worksheet, so I'll slide over here to the rightmost tab that has a plus sign on it. And if I hover my cursor over, you can see the tooltip says New Sheet to create a new worksheet. So when I click on that, notice what happens. It creates a new worksheet, but it creates it just to the right of the worksheet that I had clicked on, which is Drexel Currency. Now if I want to move this worksheet to the very end of all of my worksheets, I can simply click on it, hold down the mouse, drag it right to the end of all of these worksheets tabs, let go, and I've repositioned it. Now to rename this as Inditext, I simply double click to highlight Sheet 2, then type in the word Inditext, and then press Enter. Now I'll make the worksheet a little bit larger so that you can see things. I'm just going to do the pinch zoom on my trackpad on my Mac, but you can also use this zoom slider in the lower right hand corner, whether you're on Windows or Mac. And now to set up the worksheet the way that it was depicted in the exercise, what we're going to do is in cell A1, we're going to type in the word Inditext. In cell B2, we're going to type in value in millions of euros. Cell B3 will be 2018. Cell C3 will be the label 2017. Cell D3 will be the label growth percentage. In A4, I'll put in the label revenue. In A5, the label net income. And then we'll put in the numbers. And these are values in millions of euros. So we're going to put 26,100 in B4. That means it's 26,100 million. Now cell B5 has 2018's net income or profit. That's, uh, we'll put in 3,400, which is 3,400,000,000 in profits. Then in C4, we have the revenues for 2017, which are 25,300, which means 25,300 million. And the net income for 2017 is the same as the net income for 2018. That's 3,400, or in billions of euros, it would be 3,400 million. So now let's calculate our growth rate. And I mentioned in the exercise, the way that you calculate a growth rate typically is you take the new rate minus the old rate, and then you divide it by the old rate. Now the way that this is written is correct, but if we try to take this and put it directly into a formula, we'll run into a problem. So again, all of our formulas start with equal sign here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on B4, and I'm gonna, that's my new growth rate. I'm gonna subtract that. So do minus sign for my, with my old growth rate, which is in C4. And then if I do slash for divided by and click on C4 and press enter, what I get here is, whoa, 26,099. Why did I get that instead of the percentage that I had expected? Well, let's take a look at our formula up here. We see B4 minus C4 divided by C4. If we go over and take a look at our solution, remember what we'd learned previously about precedences. This is the way that Excel will evaluate a formula. So it takes a look at parentheses versus first negative. We have this ridiculous mnemonic here. Parents, negative personalities exist. Mind your daughters and sons. Feel free to think up a different mnemonic if, if that would um, be easier for you to remember. But what we see here is by default division is calculated before subtraction. So if we have our expression written this way, which is what we did initially, uh, the division is evaluated before the subtraction here because of precedence. So C4 divided by C4 gives us a 1, and then by subtracting our B4 value, that's why we end up with, again, if I press enter here to calculate this formula here, just 1 less than this particular value. Now, how do we fix this? Well, we see the very first thing in our precedence mnemonic are parentheses. So we're going to go over here and we're going to put parentheses around the B4 minus C4 to make sure that this subtraction is evaluated before it is divided by C4. If I press an enter here, I get a figure that looks like a growth percentage, which is great. It's not formatted as a percentage, so if I go back up and click on D4 and then click on percentage, I can see that I've reformatted that. Now I'm going to move my cursor over the little uh, fill handle. That's that small square. I'm going to um, just click on it and drag it down below, and I get a zero percentage here, which is accurate too. And if I click on D4, I can see what happens with my relative reference. When I drag down and use the fill handle, I went from B4 minus C4 over C4 2 and down below in D5, I just simply sifted, shifted the reference down by 1 when I dragged it below. So it was B5 minus C5 divided by C5. If I want to go ahead and format these values as well, I can either click on B4, hold down the mouse, and drag down to C5, 
Or what I can do is I can use my keyboard, which is just use the arrow keys to highlight B4, hold down the shift key, and then move my cursor down to C5. You can see it makes a selection as well. Click on the dollar sign that formats the selection as the accounting dollar format. If I click on decrease decimal twice, that will get rid of the sense values in there as well, which makes a little bit more sense, no pun intended. And now if I wanna go ahead and change uh, the final bit of formatting here, um, you can go ahead and select everything that you wanna format in bold. Now we want all of our titles, but not our numbers in bold. So what I've done here is I've clicked and held down an A1 and dragged to D3. Now just to remind you, you can also make a discontinuous selection as well. So if now on the Mac, I hold down my uh, Clover key or the Command key, or it should be the Control key on Windows, and then I click an A4 and drag down to A5 and let go. You can see that I've selected things that are discontinuous. Now if I go up here and click on the B for bold. I've bold faced everything. I can click in B3 and drag to D3 to underline that. I can just click on the underlined U and everything looks good. This is the answer you should have. Hope you got it.